Dragon Con. The Con of the Dragon. Oh, you can actually talk to one of these brothers. That's fine. Well, no, I was just going to say it's a con of the dragon because it's a convention. I know that. I know that. But see, it's also that's the that's that's the esoteric is deception. Exoteric, yes, it's convention. Esoteric, it's deception. So, anyways, Dragon Con, the con of the dragon, deception, and people are actually being deceived here. People are actually being deceived here to worship their false idols. And what are their false idols? Superman, Pokemon, Batman, Banana Head Man over there, and, and many other false idols. But guess what? Jesus Christ, he died on the cross for the sins of mankind so we could actually turn away from those idols. He wants us to turn, to repent, and have a broken heart, a sorrowful heart before the Lord. He wants us to turn from this wicked ways. He wants us to turn from our idol worship and turn unto Him. That's what God wants from us. That's what He wants from us all, everybody. And that's why He would send some preachers out here today to preach the gospel. Not until 10 p.m., sir. We know the laws. Sure? Yes, yes. It's not till 10 p.m. It's not till 10 p.m. No, you should check it. It's not till 10 p.m. in Atlanta. Yeah, if I'm wrong, if I'm right, I'll, I promise you're going to jail. Right? Oh, really? Yes. Okay, okay. You will make sure I'll make bond. You will make bond. I'll make bond. That's fine. We already know the laws, so you can threaten me all you want. We know the laws. We actually have we actually have amplification laws till 10 p.m. in Atlanta. Till 10 p.m. in Atlanta. We do this every weekend. So you can try to threaten all you want. It's okay. Oh, well, hey, regardless. Regardless. We're going to keep preaching regardless of the cops and their empty threats. That's right. That's, no, that's okay. That's fine. You can say that all you want. That's fine. Jesus Christ, he died on the cross for the sins of mankind, so we would no longer have to live in them. Now, what kind of sins is that? That's sins of idol worship, idolatry, pride. See, we see a lot of pride in the world today, whether it's pride in your favorite job, your career, pride in your favorite sports team, pride in your sexual orientation, pride in your favorite superhero. No matter what it is, no matter what kind of pride that is, God hates it. God hates all pride. He hates all form of idol worship. He hates all form of idol worship. But guess what? It's not too late. That's why he sent his son into the world. He sent his son into the world to die on the cross for the sins of mankind. For the sins of mankind. That means you no longer have to walk and live in idol worship. You no longer have to live in idol worship. You no longer have to live according to the lust of the flesh. You no longer have to live that way. But see, that's why we actually have to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord and turn to Jesus Christ. We actually have to repent and have a broken, sorrowful heart before the Lord. We have to actually have that in our hearts, because if we don't, then we're not truly saved. We're not truly repentant. So, I mean, everyone here, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people here, they, they believe in their false gods. They believe in this false Superman, that Superman's going to save the day, that Star Trek's going to save the day, that Star Wars is going to save the day. But guess what? Guess what? None of that can save you, folks. The only person that can save you, the only thing that can save you is the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. That he died for the sins of mankind, so we would no longer have to live in our sins. That's what this work of Christ is on the cross. That's what the work of Christ is. And that's why he came. That's why he came. He loves the world enough. He loves the world enough that he died for you. He died for your sins. He doesn't want you to be conned by the dragon. He doesn't want you to be deceived by the dragon. Not at all. Who does the dragon represent? The dragon represents the serpent. The dragon represents Satan. The dragon represents the devil. Does the dragon represent beans at all? Even a little. I'm sorry? Does the dragon represent memes, even a little bit? Memes? Yeah. I don't know what you mean by that. You know what I, don't know about I know what a meme is. I don't know what you're, I don't understand your question though. He doesn't know about memes. Oops, sorry. I know what memes are, sir. Anyways, 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 I'm going to enlighten you about the gospel. You're not going to enlighten me about memes. I know what memes are. They're little sarcastic pictures that people make. I've made some before myself in, in regards to a certain picture and a certain feeling somebody has towards that picture. Anyways, 
Anyways, the flying spaghetti monster, he cannot save either. The police cannot save you either. This is what? The earth is flat and the Bible says it. Yeah. I don't want to get on the flat earth today. No, it is though, man. I do. Listen, I'll say, I'll say this so much. Beautiful, I'll say this much. I'll if say this much. If you find that out, on, then you will see hold on, hold so on, much on. of God's glory, man. I understand. You have I understand to see what you're saying. I'll, I'll say this you much. Have to see I understand. It, I'll, I'll share this much. I believe in geocentricity. We are the center. We are the universe. We are the center of the. But anyways, I'm not here to debate about flat Earth, though. I, I, I'm either. I'm either. There's no not, yeah. such thing as aliens. God did not make aliens. He didn't I agree with you on that. I agree with you about that. I agree with you about that. It's all about us. That's it. We are the center of the universe. I, I, but I'm, gonna, I'm still going to preach the gospel. This this man this man says there's no aliens, and I agree with him about that. There are no aliens. There are demons, though. There are devils, and they pose as aliens. I was first. I was vampires. There's no such thing as vampires, they're demons. It's gonna tell you that the earth is flat, and it's gonna tell you that mountains are trees. Oh no, no, not the mountains are trees, no. Not that one, not that one. It's true. No, I've heard that one, no. And you don't believe all the Bible, if you don't, re if you don't believe bro, this, bro, and you bro, don't believe bro, all the Bible. Bro, 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 bro. Mountains are not trees. Y'all don't know. Mountains are not trees. Y'all don't even know what I know, I know that, I know that the person said there's no forest on the flat earth, I know. I've seen the videos, I've seen the videos. You don't even read the Bible. I know. You would, you would know. I never thought I would actually meet one of these people in person. You would know. You would know. If God you bless read you. the Bible. Yeah, exactly. God, God bless you. you. If you read God the Bible, you. you would understand it, man. You have to I read ask. The Bible. I read you the have Bible. to ask for his guidance and for the, the right way to see things because you're looking at it the wrong way. No, I Once you see all of God's glory, then you can appreciate it. Then you can come out. So you don't believe in mountains? Then you can come out. You don't believe mountains are real? No. 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 Do you believe mountains are real? Do you know where all this? Do you know where all this theology is coming from? It's actually coming from Dragon Con. Just like the Mandela effect, the Mandela effect comes from Dragon Con as well. It actually was created in 2010 at the Dragon Con convention in Fiona Broom. They created what's called the Mandela effect, and and, and this this is what this is the kind of theology. Oh, I understand, bro. This is the kind of theology that produces at the Dragon Con event. His height reaches to the heavens, and it can be seen to the ends of all. Uh, so, anyways, anyways, the Dragon Con produces these kind of these kind of doctrines, these kind of theories. Dragon Con specializes in what's called alternate history, and with the Mandela effect, the Mandela effect is teaching people that 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 through CERN that people have gone back in time and altered different things in reality, like the Berenstein Bears being being the Berenstein Bears now, but it was once supposedly the Berenstein Bears. This is what kind of theology is being taught. This is the kind of theology that's being taught at the Dragon Con. But Lord rebuked that. Lord rebuked that. They did not go back in time and change our King James Bible. And that's, see, that's what, that's the kind of fruit that is produced from the Dragon Con and the sci-fi and alternate history and all the other different little doctrines and theories they teach. They teach they teach about there's no force on the flat earth and that the trees are actually the mountains are trees. I don't care about that. What does that have to do with salvation? What does what does mountains and trees have to do with salvation? Absolutely nothing. See, that's why we're out here today. We're out here to give the gospel according to Jesus Christ. And the gospel according to Jesus Christ is that he died on the cross for the sins of mankind. So we would no longer have to live in our sins. And on the third day, he defeated death by taking all those sins to hell. And he left those sins there. And he was resurrected on the third day. On the third day, Jesus Christ was resurrected. Hallelujah. On the third day, he defeated death. He conquered death. And then for 40 days, he was seen on this earth by his disciples and his apostles, over 500. And on the 40th day, on the 40th day, Jesus Christ was was ascended to sit at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, he was ascended to sit at the right hand of God. He is God manifest in the flesh. Hallelujah. That's Jesus Christ. And that's the gospel. So all those who come before Christ with a broken and sorrowful heart for their sins, when they come before him and they repent, he will hear them. God does not hear the proud. God hates pride. And the proud and the prideful, they cannot stand before God. That's why he cast Lucifer out of heaven. That's why we have to we have to come. We're all not bigots. We're preaching love, man. We're preaching love. And see, that's why we have to swallow our pride and we have to have a broken, sorrowful heart for 
our sin and come before God and say, God, I'm a wretched person. I'm a wicked, evil person, Lord. Save me. Save me out of my wicked state. Save me out of my wretched condition. Psalm 51. Psalm 51 is David going before the Lord and he's repenting. He's having a true, genuine, honest repentance before the Lord with his broken and sorrowful heart for the sins that he committed by having Uriah killed and, and, and by fornicating with Bathsheba. David should have been off at war, but instead he was caught in idleness. He was caught in his idleness. And see, that's what idleness produces. Idleness produces wickedness. And unfortunately, I see a lot of idleness out here today. At the end of the day, what is all this cosplay going to get you? What is this? What kind of bearing on your soul does cosplay have? What kind of bearing on your soul does dressing up as your favorite uh, cartoon characters and, and superheroes? What does that have on your soul? What kind of bearing does that have on your soul? It has no bearing whatsoever on your soul. But all it does prove is that, unfortunately, many, many Americans, many, many people in the world in general, are caught in idol worship. I mean, like, we have this guy right here, complete perversion. Complete perversion. This cop is talking about arresting me. He should arrest this man for walking around in public naked. Yeah, well, he's giving us a show. Yo, I'm giving you the gospel. You you guys would rather see a half-naked man than, than actually hear the gospel. That's pretty sad and pathetic, this world we live in today. That's pretty sad and pathetic. You guys would rather see a guy wearing a Speedo in public than actually hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel that actually saves men's souls. The gospel, according to Underwear Man, does not save people's souls. That does not save people's souls. Underwear Man did not die on the cross for the sins of mankind. Only Jesus Christ did. Only Jesus Christ did. Only Jesus Christ can atone for your souls. Only Jesus Christ can atone for your sin. And he, and he prays and he hopes that people would actually humble themselves. They would actually swallow their pride and come to the Lord with, with fear and trembling and come to the Lord with a broken heart. With a broken heart. That's what the Lord wants. That's what the Lord requires. That's what the Lord requests. He, he requests that you come to Him with a broken and contrite heart and spirit. And that you ask for forgiveness and you get down on your knees and say, Lord, Lord, please save me. Please help me, Father God. I'm a wretched, wicked sinner and I need help. I'm in need of a Savior because I can't save myself. And that's how we must come before the Lord. And He will hear your cries and He will hear your heart. And He will say, come unto me, son. Come unto me, daughter. And I will give you rest. That's what Jesus Christ came to do. He came to give us... And that's why I'm preaching His love, ma'am. Hallelujah. That's why I'm preaching His love. Yeah, you put me off while you say He loves everybody. Exactly. That shows what's in the abundance of your heart, ma'am. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And your fingers speaketh, too. So you can flip the preacher off all you want. It's okay. But guess what? You won't flip Christ off on the day of judgment. You're not going to flip Jesus Christ off. So you can mock me. That's cool. Mock me all day. I don't care. I don't care if I look like an idiot. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm glad you feel that way. I'm not out here to please you. I'm not a people pleaser. If I was a people pleaser, I'd dress up as, as my favorite superhero too. But guess what? My favorite superhero and my only superhero is Jesus Christ. He's the only superhero that can actually save your soul. Superman can't save your soul. Batman can't save your soul. Uh, Darth Vader, he can't save your soul. Michelangelo, Raphael, Leonardo, Donatello, they can't save your souls. None of them can. Terminator, he can't save your soul. And especially the dragon and his cons, his deception, cannot save your soul. See, that's the whole point of events like this, is to deceive people. It's to deceive people into thinking what they're doing is okay. But this is actually idol worship. And they laugh and they mock, but this is all idol worship, ma'am, while you're dressed like a harlot. While you're dressed like a harlot, ma'am, I pray you put some clothes on. There's little children out here. Little children out here in the midst of all this perversion. In the midst of all these girls dressing like harlots. Dressing like harlots. Now, now, what, are we, how, what, what, what kind of message does that send to the young children out here? All the three, four, five, ten, nine, seven, and so on and so forth we see out here. All the young children, even the adults. We're not to set anything wicked before our eyes. And we got girls out here thinking that it's okay to dress this way. I mean, seriously, that's that's not cool at all. I mean, do we not think about the little children when we come Praise out here in public? God You're not cool like at all. You, God's not real. Well, that's your opinion. You can go worship your flying spaghetti monster all you want, but guess what? Your meatballs aren't going to get you into heaven. His noodles are not going to get you into heaven. Only 
only Jesus Christ, only Jesus Christ atones for the sins of mankind. Only Jesus Christ. Not, uh, what's her name, Harley Quinn? Harley Quinn does not atone for your sins. The Joker does not atone for your sins. Mario does not atone for your sins. Luigi does not atone for your sins. Anakin and Luke Skywalker do not atone for your sins. Only Jesus Christ, only the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross can atone for the sins of mankind. Only Jesus Christ. And that's why he sends his preachers out here to actually preach the gospel. Because it's not being preached. It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's God's will. God wants everybody to repent. He would love to see everybody come to heaven. But guess what? Pride keeps people out of the presence of God. And that's why God hates pride. That's why he casts Lucifer out of his presence. That's why he casts the dragon out of the heaven. That's why the dragon was cast out of heaven. And that's why he's conning people today. He's conning them with his deception, with his subtlety. That's how the dragon operates. That's how the serpent operates. He operates with subtlety. He operates with deception. He operates through conning people. Conning them into idol worship. See, this is all idol worship. All idol worship. Hey, you shake your head, but it's true. This is very true. This is very true. It's idol worship, sir. Do, do, you, do you wear Christ proudly on your shirt like that? But you wear your favorite superheroes as a grown adult. A grown adult, and you're wearing superhero shirts. But you, but you guys say we're the ones who believe in a false god. You're the ones that are believing in superheroes. I mean, come on. What sense does that make? What sense does that really make? At least, at least our God, at least our God can actually atone for the sins of mankind. Our God can actually do that. Lord, rebuke that in Jesus' name. I pray that Jezebel puts some clothes on. So wicked, so wicked that we're dressed like this in front of little children. So wicked. You, you, you hail the one that wants to kill you and steal your soul, man. I pray you repent. You, you say that now. You say, hail Satan now, but you're not going to be hailing him in the lake of fire unless you repent. Unless you repent. Hell is not no big party. Hell is not a party. There's no party in hell. There's no beer in hell. There's no cosplay in hell. There's no Superman in hell. Superman's not even real. Superman. Okay, well, you say that now. You say that now. You say that now. Go worship your flying spaghetti monster then, ma'am. I'm, sh I'm sure those meatballs will save you. I'm sure noodles can save you, right? Well, guess what can save? Jesus Christ. And the, sh and the shed blood he did on the cross at Calvary. I gave my that heart can to save Jesus. Him. And now he doesn't write. He doesn't call. What did I do? And they mock. So it says the guy with a unicorn in his backpack. Well, are you a brony? Are you a brony, sir? Are you a brony? Do all those people that have unicorns in their backpack? Everybody wants them to repent of their idol worship. That's what God loves. God loves a repentant sinner. God loves a repentant sinner. If you say God loves everybody, then why doesn't he love that guy? God loves, I didn't say he doesn't, but God, you know what God loves? He loves a repentant sinner. God hates all workers of iniquity, Psalm 5-5. God hates pride. You can put me off all you want, devil. Lord, rebuke you, Satan. No, I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the devil in you. I'm speaking to the devil in you. Exactly. Exactly. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And that's what's in the abundance of their heart. They hail Satan. They hail Satan. That's right. Amen. Amen. A fool has said in his heart, there is no God. A fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Psalm 14, 1. There is a God. And that, there, there is a God. There is a mighty God. There's a judgment of God. There's the wrath of God. And there's also the love of God. But guess what? The wrath of God abides on all those who are in unbelief. If you are in unbelief, the wrath of God abides upon you. And see, we're not coming out here to condemn anybody. Those that don't believe, they're condemned already until they actually come to the true knowledge of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They're already condemned. Except they're all forgiven already. Nah, that's not true. 
You're, how are you forgiven when you continue in your sin? You don't believe it. If you continue in your sin, you don't believe in that forgiveness. You don't believe in that forgiveness. Oh, grace. So, so here we are. Everyone's under the gospel of grace, right? Should we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Exactly. They shake their head yes. They want to continue in their sin. The grace of God does not abide upon you. I'm sorry, but it doesn't. It doesn't. God's grace does not abide upon willful sinners. It doesn't. And that's why that's why God sends out his messengers to preach the law. Because unless you actually repent and you have a broken heart before the Lord, the grace of God does not abide upon you. The God, the, the grace of God did not abide upon me when I was a wicked sinner. When I was living in my idolatry and my fornication and my drug use and my drunkenness and any other wicked sin, my pride and, and my evil mouth. Ask one of these two, please. Do you eat shrimp? Yes. You're going to hell then! <laughs> Here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Here we go with the straw man. Uh, I always pull out the shrimp card. Guess what? I'm not a Levitical priest, man. And neither is he, and neither is he. We're not Levitical priests. We're at Levitical priests. Nothing to say? Nothing to say? I'm sorry? Uh, it's actually also in the New Testament. Romans 1, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, Jude. Uh, what else? Jesus Christ said that marriage is between man and woman. Not man and man, not woman and woman. Jesus Christ said that. So anyways, yes, I'm not a Levitical priest, so yes, I do eat shrimp. Um, yes, I do wear mixed fibers because I'm not a Levitical priest. Um, what else? What, what else you got? So you're telling me you're choosing what parts of the... No, I'm telling you that that part in Leviticus was set up specifically for the Levitical priesthood. There's the Levitical laws, there's the moral laws, and there's the dietary laws. And those dietary laws apply to the Levitical priests. I'm not a Levitical priest. I'm not a Levitical priest. So you can mock all you want, young lady, it's okay. But guess what? Eating shrimp does not send somebody to hell. But guess what does send people to hell? Living an unrepentant life. An unrepentant life. Not having sorrow for your sin. And I see that mockery smile on your face. It's okay. But unrepentant sinners do not go to heaven. I do love my neighbor, and that's why I'm out here telling my neighbor the truth in love. If there was a semi coming in this road right now and it was about to hit you, if I loved you enough when I tell you, hey, young lady, that semi is about to hit you, right? Right? Isn't that love? Isn't that love? Exactly, and it's a basic human responsibility to tell people the judgment that's coming. The Lord Jesus Christ said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. As it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Jesus did condemn, actually. Yes, guess what? He said all those that are unbelief are condemned already. Those that do not believe are condemned already. I'm not condemning anybody. I'm speaking the truth in love, man. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ will send out his encouragers out here. Like this, like this young gentleman right here. He sends out his encouragers. And Lord, rebuke that 666 hand sign you just threw up. Lord, rebuke that. Lord, rebuke that in Jesus' name. I don't accept that. I don't accept your little 666 hand signatures. Exactly. They, they mock. They mock. They hail the same one that wants to take their soul to hell. But guess what? Jesus Christ loves you enough that he will send some preachers out here in the midst of all this wickedness. He'll send some preachers out here to actually speak the truth and love. And, and take the mockery. And take the laughs and the scoffs and the scorn. Because guess what? It's, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. We've been knocked out before. We've been spit on. We've been surrounded by thousands of Jehovah Witnesses. And none of it stops us. And we're going to keep preaching the gospel. And see, and that's why we come out here today, because there's many lost souls out here who are in need of the gospel. See, unfortunately, we don't see Creflo Dollar coming out here. And this is this is, this is is Atlanta's baby, right? This is the king preacher of Atlanta. And he's not out here preaching. He don't care about people's souls. There's prime customers out here everywhere for him to preach the gospel too. Because he believes, as T.D. Jakes believes, they believe it's merchandise. They believe that the gospel of Christ is merchandise. And see, they flee. They flee because they have nothing to say. No, I'm not. I'm not telling these nerds are going to hell. I'm telling them that I'm giving them the glory of God that if they actually repent from their idol worship and they turn unto Him with a broken heart, they're not going to go to hell. But see, the, the 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 preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish. That's what it says in the Word of God. And the Word of God also says, the Word of God also says, how can they hear without a preacher? How can they hear without a preacher? 
Exactly, exactly, says the demon with his demonic voice. How can they hear without a preacher? How can they hear without a preacher? They actually have to preach the whole counsel of God, the whole word of God. And unfortunately, in most lukewarm Christian churches today, it's not being done. And that's why we see America going to hell in a handbasket. That's why it's going to hell in a handbasket. That's why the Supreme Court legalized gay marriage all across the board last summer. Because the true preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ is not being done. But guess what? As the enemy ramps up his attacks, as the enemy wraps up his, his, his methods, so does God's warriors. So does Christians. And God will send his warriors out there in the midst, in the midst of all this danger, in the midst of all this wickedness, in the midst of young girls dressing like harlots, young 15-year-olds dressing like harlots. Are you kidding me? Where is the parenting at? The Word of God says, train up your child in the way they should go. And when they grow older, they will not depart from it. So when you actually train your child up in the true gospel of Jesus Christ, a true disciple of Christ is not going to depart from that. They may backslide. I backslid in my life, but guess what? I had to come before the Lord with a broken and contrite heart and in spirit and, and come before Him in complete sorrow and say, Lord, Father God, please help me. I'm a wicked sinner. I can't overcome this cigarette addiction, Lord. I can't come overcome my addiction to pornography, Lord. I can't overcome my addiction to fornicating, Lord. Lord, help me. Help me, Father God. And, and through that brokenness, through that brokenness, that's how he was able to take up all those broken pieces and put my heart back together again. But he put it together. Jesus Christ put it together. Not cosplay, not Superman, not Batman, not any of these superheroes, not Harley Quinn, not the, um, whatever that green thing is called on Batman. Whatever that lady's called, the uh, Poison Ivy or whatever her name is, Ivy, I don't know. But anyways, none of those people can save your soul and you guys can mock all you want it's cool i get it i get it man it's all good as i know that's what you're here for we're here to preach the gospel regardless of that so it's all good you know satan's gonna send out his little agents whether they know they're being used by satan or not people like that are being used by satan but guess what it actually only brings more attention to the gospel when they do that so thank you. Thank you for bringing more attention to the gospel. We really appreciate it. And that's, that's the hopes of Jesus Christ, that many will come today. That many will come today, and they'll repent. When they go home tonight, they'll say, Lord, Lord, we heard what the preacher was saying. And is what he's saying true? Is it true, Lord? Is it true, Lord? Because, you know, I'm spending a lot of time and money and energy in all the superhero stuff, Lord. And at the end of the day, what is it? In the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon said when he came towards the end of his life, he said, all is vanity. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity, saith the preacher. All was vanity to him. All the money, all the 700 wives and the 300 concubines, and all the money in the world, all the gold in the world Solomon had, it was all vanity. It was all vanity because guess what? He could have all that and go straight to hell. He could have all the riches of the world and go straight to hell. But guess what? He had to come before the Lord him with a broken heart. He came before the Lord with a broken heart, just like his father David did. And he said, Lord, all is vanity. You know, I realize how wicked my life was. I realize how none of it matters. You can ask one of these gentlemen the question, please. Hey, none do you of guys it matters. know that your souls are like super ugly? So say at the center. So say at the center. Exactly. Exactly. So Solomon had to come before the Lord with a broken heart. David came before the Lord with a broken heart. Peter had to come before the Lord with a broken heart when he denied Christ. He realized he made a big mistake by denying Christ, but Christ told him he was going to do that. And it was only to strengthen him. He will take us in our weaknesses and strengthen us. But does that mean we continue living in our weakness? Does that mean we continue living off in our sin? That grace may abound? God forbid. God forbid we continue living in our sin that grace may abound. That's not what the grace of God is about. The grace of God is that he sent Jesus Christ into the world to die for the sins of mankind. That's the grace of God. It says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the grace of God. That's the love of God. That's the love of Jesus Christ. So when people say preach the love, God is love, we do preach the love. And guess what that love is? That love is the shed blood on the cross, on Calvary. That that's what love is. That's what the love of God is. That's what the true love of God is. The love of God is that he sent his only begotten son into the world, that he would die for the sins of mankind. 
He died for the sins of mankind. He didn't necessarily die so we could go to heaven, but he died so we would no longer have to live in our sin. That's why he died on the cross. And that's what we come out here and, and, and share with the people today. Whether people want to hear it or not, you're still going to hear it. Do you think I want to hear certain songs when I go into stores? No. But guess what? I'm forced to hear it. So you're going to hear the gospel today. God bless you all. This is sad, all these young children dressing like this. It's so sad, this is so sad. It breaks my heart, man. So do we have any atheists out there? Any atheists? Yes. Don't worry, it's not a permanent condition. You'll be cured of your atheism eventually. Amen. It happened to me. Amen. I was an atheist most of my adult life. Three years ago, I heard the word of God watching a YouTube video while I was trying to destroy some Christian straw men. And the word of God, God gives an inner testament to the truth of it. If you are actually looking for the truth, you will find God. The reason you cannot find God is because God is hiding His face from you. Look at yourself. Look at yourself. He's holy and separate from sinners. You need to be holy. And you can't now get that holiness outside of Jesus Christ. The Holy One came, became man, lived that perfect life, so that you can have the righteousness of Christ. Through faith, it's a free gift from God. And when you hear the word, and God gives you any destiny to that, you will believe. And repentance is wave the white flag. And then God makes belief in Him a proper basic belief. You are the proof that God exists. You are the proof that the Bible is true. Of course, it tells the story of your life. You said I was going to go to jail. You man, take out the heart of stone, put in the heart of flesh. That's why I am a Christian. Otherwise, I would still be an atheist. I couldn't believe something. I couldn't go test myself. But the Bible makes certain claims. It tells you if you go do certain things, certain things are going to happen to you. And that's what happened. And that's what happened. Yes, that's my testimony, sir. I was addicted. I was an evil person. Evil, evil person. And I was changed in the flesh. Flesh. When I waved the white flag and I painted. Uh, Take your own advice, sir. Take your own advice. Says the guy wearing a dress. So let me let me help you out. Um, you know, if you are from uh, this convention and you're older than 15 years old, you really cannot mock anybody. Okay, you cannot mock anybody. You live in a glass house. If you are older than 15 years old and you are at this convention, oh, wow. you cannot mock anybody. Go home. Go wow. look for God. Wow, look this. Take your children home. Teach them about God. Shriners God. will not enter the so kingdom of God, man. Really have a lot of Shriners, Shriners at the highest level worship Lucifer. Shriners worship Lucifer, ma'am. Shriners worship Lucifer. Life came into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Wow. That's who puts on these events anyway. You don't find him because you don't want to find him. You want to be the God of your own life. You want to be the God of your own life. You want to justify your sin. Because there's pleasure in sin for a season. But your life is a vapor and you will die. You will have to do an account. You have a conscience for a reason. That testifies against you. And that will testify against <laughs> I have you. I have every once in a while. Also tells us, the preaching, uh, does this look foolish? Does this look foolish? Good. The Bible tells us the preaching, the, the please God through the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. If you get converted, you hear the word of God and God gives you witness to the truth of that. Not because I made a great presentation of the gospel or I great music and a laser show. That's not how it please God to save those who believe. Through the foolishness of preaching. So I humble myself. I know exactly what this looks like. I stand here on the street corner and I show you biblical love. Biblical love, the word is a It Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Biblical love will tell you you're wrong when you're wrong. 